Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. This is Bloomberg Business Week with Carol Masser and Tim Stenebeck on Bloomberg Radio. Well, if you're a regular viewer or listener of Bloomberg Business Week, then you know we like to check in with mayors across America for a snapshot of what's going on in their communities. After all, Carol, they're the ones on the front lines dealing with the macroeconomic challenges we talk about each and every day. Economic development, affordable housing, rising costs, not to mention the politics of it all. Yeah, it's a great snapshot of so much in our world and really on the ground. G.T. Bynum is one of those mayors. He's the mayor of Tulsa, Oklahoma, a city his family has lived in for six generations. And a fun fact, his great, great paternal grandfather was mayor as well as his maternal grandfather. So it goes back many generations. We should point out to Mayor Bynum in the city of Tulsa. I've worked with Bloomberg Philanthropies and its cities program, but uh, he's here away from his own city and here in New York City. Um, Mayor Bynum, so good to have you here with us. Um, Welcome, welcome. We do like to talk with mayors around the country because it does feel like sometimes we're looking up too high and not getting down on the ground. Mm. And so tell us about what you guys are seeing when it comes to the economy, the needs of your citizens, kind of the stress points or where there's growth. Give us kind of an overview, if you will. Well, I think uh, at the local level, and I hear this from my fellow mayors when we get together, one that I think is really important is you never run into the partisan divides that you see so much about at the national Mm -hmm. level. Like when mayors get together, we want to know what you're doing on homelessness. What are you doing on infrastructure and public safety? So I love that part of being a mayor. Uh, For us, I think from an economic standpoint, we definitely see the impact of inflation uh, and the impact that that's had on uh, people's buying power and even us in operating a city government, you know, we're heavily funded by sales tax and we had a really from the outside looks like a nice two year run where we had this massive increase in revenue, but it was because of the cost of goods going up and sales tax going up. And so that's eating into our employees paychecks. And Mm -hmm. so we've had to really be disciplined about staying on top of that and in, approving increased employee pay and compensation to couple with that. The other big one that I hear from mayors all over America really is around homelessness. Uh, There is not a city that has Mm -hmm. it all figured out. If there was, I think we'd all be ripping them off and figuring out how to pay for it. And instead, you just see these laboratories of democracy all over America right now where cities are trying out different approaches, collecting data on what's working and what's not, and trying to double down on those strategies that do. Oftentimes, one of the reasons people find themselves um, on the streets is because housing is too expensive. And we Mm. talk about housing being affordable or the lack of affordability of housing in many parts of the country. Tulsa, by no means, immune to that. Um, According to your own uh, data that you provided us, you need over 10,000 affordable housing units in the next few years to accommodate uh, people who live there. That's exactly right. How, how are you doing it? We always thought of ourselves as being a very affordable place. When think, you compare yeah. Tulsa to like the coastal United States, we're incredibly affordable, but you have to take into consideration what your local per capita income is when figuring that out. And so to your point, we just had a, an independent study conducted, funded by a local philanthropic foundation that says that we need about 13,000 housing units in the next 10 years. And that's everything from uh, homeless shelter space to mansions. Mm-hmm. And every in between. What we've tried to focus on as a city are those things that the free market is not going to address, and that is homeless shelter space, permanent supportive housing, uh, and transitional housing. We just passed in August a $70 million voter-approved initiative to help subsidize those things, uh, to make it more appealing for private sector developers to build that knowing that they can get some support from the city for doing it. Uh, We just had the, the other thing that we tried to focus on is reducing the regulatory burden from the city. Uh, We've seen a lot of cities that will have a lot of incentive funding available, but the regulatory burden is so great, and so private sector developers still don't build there. So we've reduced that significantly in Tulsa. Because of that, last year we had the most home starts we've ever had in the history of our city. Hmm. But we're going to have to continue to ramp that up just to catch up to the pace we need to be keeping for the next decade to get the amount of housing that everybody tells us we need to reduce homelessness in our city. All right, so there's demand for housing, no doubt about it. You want to make sure it's 
that's affordable, right, for the people who need it. And exactly. I'm just curious that at the same time then, so you want to have an economy within <laughs> your city and surrounding environs um, that can support that. What are you doing on that side of the ledger? Uh, I would say probably the, a couple big things. Uh, one, and I know last time I was on here, we talked about our, our focus on advanced aerial mobility. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, we were one of uh, 26 cities in America to receive a Build Back Better Regional Challenge grant, uh, which we're using to build out the advanced aerial mobility drones, especially in yeah. the Tulsa area. We've partnered with the Osage Nation to build a drone testing corridor in Tulsa or in their nation, their reservation. It's about 70 miles long. Uh, so we're trying to build that industry out. The other big thing that we're doing is focusing on entrepreneurship and fostering that. And in particular, in our immigrant community in Tulsa, uh, we what did a your immigrant community in yes Tulsa. it's uh it, largely it's going to be well one it's all over the world we have the largest uh afghan refugee community in tulsa of any city in america uh it heavily hispanic and then also uh, a significant asian population that has come as a result of refugee work that uh, the faith-based community in tulsa has been doing for mm -hmm. decades and so uh, we just opened up a new business incubator in probably the most densely populated area of our city where the immigrant community lives to focus in particular on immigrant entrepreneurs and making sure they have connections to the assets that they need to build new businesses in our city because our data we've collected shows that the inclination to entrepreneurship amongst immigrants, at least in Tulsa, is much higher than the non-immigrant population. Yeah. So we want to make sure they have the resources they need. Uh, so there's there's a tremendous amount of work that's being done. Those are just two things. Uh, but you're right. We, we've got to keep pace with economic growth to support all of this housing and yeah. the population growth. We are also... Not to belabor the Helps point, but the tax base too. we have become an accidental mecca for remote work as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And I know we visited about that a bit last time. Yeah. Well, but, I do want to talk yeah. about work because the unemployment yeah. rate relatively low in Tulsa, about 4%, yes. according to the Labor Department. Uh, with all the companies that you're trying to attract to the area, are they going to be able to find the workers they need in Tulsa? We believe so for one, for one big reason, well, two big reasons. One, uh, we're very much focused on building up quality of life in our city so it's easier for them to recruit people to Tulsa. Uh, we're on a 20-year run now of major investments. Uh, we had our, our concert arena that we built has been the concert arena two of the last four years. We lost out to Madison Square Garden one year. We lost out to the Staples Center in L.A. one year. So not bad competition for a concert arena in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. uh, we just opened the greatest park gift to any city in America. American history about three years ago, The Gathering Place. Uh, it's a $480 million entirely privately funded park uh, in the heart of our city. We're building a lake in the middle of our city that's going to open on Labor Day weekend. We're building a museum to house the greatest collection of American art outside of that owned by the federal government that is in Tulsa. We just opened the Bob Dylan archive about so two tourism. years ago. So there's a lot going More. on from a quality of life yeah. standpoint. And the other is, yeah. and I, I think this is really important, we want to be the best city in America for immigrants. Uh, we're working very hard to make Tulsa uh, a city that really lives up to the hopes and aspirations that immigrants from all around the world have when they come to the United States. We want them to be welcome. We want them to find great jobs and opportunity in our city. You're in our great city for a specific reason. Tell us about what you were doing last night. So the Outsiders, which I imagine a lot of your listeners have either right. read the seventh book. Seventh grade. Yeah. Seventh grade. It's <laughs> right? like required the reading. Like, oh yes. my God. The greasers so, and the socias. That's right. So the Outsiders. <laughs> was written by a high school student in amazing. Tulsa decades ago, Essie Hinton. She li still lives in Tulsa. Uh, then Francis Ford Coppola made a movie that launched the careers of just an unbelievable number of actors who went on to have big careers. Well, now it has been made into a Broadway musical, and it's premiering tonight on Broadway. So we have about 200 people from Tulsa who are in town to support the show, uh, that we're just so proud of it, and, and that this story written by our fellow Tulsan has become a classic of uh, American literature, film, and we believe it will be on Broadway as well. Well, how was the show? It was amazing, amazing. The the, uh, the performers in it are great. 
the special effects and stage work in it. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, it and it they do a great job of honoring the spirit of the book uh, and the story that's so important. We should note the show on Broadway is produced by Angelina Jolie. Um, and again, uh, as you mentioned, based on the book by S.E. Hinton. Really great stuff. Um, enjoy, it's amazing enjoy. how young she was when she wrote. What did you do in high school? She wrote a she wrote a book. Hey, I, I was like, ouch. <laughs> can you imagine being defined for your whole life by one thing you did in high school? Exactly. Yeah, oh yeah no, <laughs> yes, no, no, no. Right. For um, most of us, no. Great to check in with you again. Good luck with everything. Have a, a good trip home. Thank you both so much. Enjoy, enjoy. Good to see um, you. Yeah, great to see you. Mayor G.T. Bynum, of course, the mayor of Tulsa, Oklahoma, joining us here in our Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio.